Hi everybody, it's Michelle, and today I want to talk about how you can use digital apps to apply the bullet journal method. Please note that the apps that I'm going to go over with you guys are just some of the apps that I have personally used, so I have experience with them. These are my favorites. I have absolutely no affiliation with any of these apps. Um, that's just what I prefer and what I know. Now to start out, I'm gonna go over two apps that work on all devices. So it would be good for anybody who has a iPad, a Samsung tablet, such as this one here, or you can even use it on your PC. You can use it on your Android phone. You can use it on your iPhone. These apps will sync across all devices and work in any environment that you're, you prefer to use. And you can use them all in order to just have the best system set up for you. The first of these apps is OneNote. Now this is my favorite right now. All of my planners are in OneNote now. And all of the new planners that I have designed are made specifically for OneNote, which is much different than the old planners that I used to have. I still have some of those in the shop, but, um, and they will be, there will be new ones at the beginning of the year, but I'm not doing the mid-year. I didn't do any mid-year planners that were PDF planners because I am so into OneNote right now. And so many people actually use this app. So you can peruse out there online and see if there's an app that you want to buy where you already have something kind of preformed like this. Uh, all of my planners are preformed with the months and I have dashboards and then we have like weekly setups here. You can do this if you want some format to your planner. You don't have to do this. One note, all you need to do is add a page. Let's title it today's date seven. 2019 and then we can do the view right here I'm gonna do some grid paper and there we go and I have a blank page to do my daily log for my bullet journal so you can set it up how structured how you want like with a month and then all your days underneath all your logs any and you can have a whole separate section for collections it's kind of like a folder tree where you just go from here to here to here you have your notebook you have your sections, which can do the categories, and then your pages within that. So it's real easy to set things up. Plus with OneNote, it's all searchable, even your handwriting. So it, it will go through all of that text and find what you're looking for. I have indexes set up actually within the planner notebook where I can link to certain pages in an index. So I can do that easily but I don't really need to whenever I can search. So that's what makes this so great. And this will sync over to my phone. I can get on the computer, which there's a lot more functionality when I'm using it on my laptop because I use the older version of OneNote on my laptop. I have both of them on there, but uh, there's just a lot more function to the old, the 2016 version that I have installed over there. So when I want to write out things, this is what I'm using. If I'm doing a lot of typing, I can get on my laptop. So this can easily be done in OneNote and you can structure it the way that you want to. Now the next app that you can use is Metamoji Note. And this also has a version for iOS, it has a version for Android, and it has a version for PC, for uh, Windows. So you can use it on any of those. And it's the same thing. I have a pre-installed planner here that you can buy something if you want to and have your basic format, but you don't have to. You can simply add a page and we can pick the paper right here. We can change the paper to grid paper, all pages, and there we go. And then you have some grid paper that you can do your daily logs, same concept except this will not set it up in trees for you like a folder tree like OneNote, but it is all searchable. Also, you can search and see if you can find your writing or you can text, you can do whatever you want there. So that is Metamoji Note. Right, before moving on, let me just mention that OneNote is a free app. It's always free. You can download it. You can use it on all your devices for free. Metamoji Note also has a free version that you can use, or there's another version, I believe that's like $2.99 that gives you more functionality as far as being able to sync across all of your devices and have uh, the cloud storage to do that. 
So for me, I do have that. It was totally worth it for me to um, sign up for that. And I did that years ago. And um, so those two are free. And those two will go across all your different devices. You can use it on anything. So that might be the most practical of, of the apps. But if you are big into the iOS environment, if you have a Mac and an iPad and that type of thing, there are a couple more that I want to talk about that work great, especially on your iPads. Now, the first version that I'm going to talk about is, of course, GoodNotes. Um, I started using GoodNotes a long time ago. And when I started designing planners, that's what specifically what I designed them for is to be used in GoodNotes because GoodNotes has the ability to use all the tab functions. So whenever you have your pen turned off up here, you can tab to the different areas and you can, you know, build in a lot of functionality into the planner that way. But we're not necessarily talking about a planner today. So we're talking about being able to do this method in here. Now, what I used to do is just go in here. I would have my times and then I would add in pages in between my weeks. I would just copy a blank page of grid notes. I'm going to show you how I did that. Down in the bonus section, I always have extras. So I would edit. Just copy that. No, this one. Like that. Copy. And then I would go up here to wherever it is in the planner. Like if it was this week right here. See there? Okay. And then I would hit the plus sign and then add the page right in between there. Paste the copied page. And then I would have a full spread right here to do my bullet journal and my daily logs for every day. So it's really easy to do that. If you don't want to have a preform planner, then all you need to do is just simply add pages. You can open a new notebook, add a page, insert page, and we are going to use some graph paper. Let's see, just regular graph paper here. And then we can go there. Oh, hit done. And then you have a whole page here to do your daily logs or whatever you want to do for each day. And these will look better this way in portrait mode. And you can have it like that. This is all searchable also. And this is the GoodNotes 4 app. I have GoodNotes 5 on here also, which this that update came out. It's been a while, but it's still, to me, too glitchy. I don't like it as well. Um, it does have more functionality as far as, like, fonts that you can use and that type of thing. But I'm most comfortable with GoodNotes 4, even though I don't ever use this anymore because I'm using OneNote all the time now. But this is really easy to use and to set up. Now, uh, you can sync this between your iOS devices. So if you have GoodNotes installed also on your Mac, it can sync over there. If you have like an iPad and an iPhone, you can sync it there. It all syncs through your iCloud services. So you just have to turn that on in the app and then you can have your bullet journal with you wherever you go. And the next iOS app that I wanted to talk about is Zoom Notes. Zoom Notes has so much functionality that it's just crazy. And if you are coming from GoodNotes or OneNote or whatever, it, there's a little bit of a learning curve in learning how to use all of these functions over here and up here. But once you get comfortable with it, it's a really nice app to use. I just don't use it anymore because, let me turn this sideways, because it... Uh, was too glitchy and too slow. It's hard to swipe through. Um, I did have one of my planners disappear um, and everything on it disappeared. So that was kind of crazy. So I stopped using it, but um, it is a good option. It gives you just so many functions, especially like how you could put a page within a page here. So you could do like some private uh, journaling or whatever, and you can have it within the page. So that was really, really nice about this. And there's a whole group over on Facebook too that you can get technical support on Zoom Notes and um, get your questions answered over there. So it is a nice app. It is not a free app. I should mention Good Notes is not free either. You're gonna have to pay for these two apps, but um, 
but they're kind of worth it if you're willing to go through the learning curve of learning this and you don't get too frustrated that it can be kind of laggy like when you're swiping you see it doesn't swipe very nicely but this is the same concept where you can add in pages you can add in a whole page and you could do your daily logs that type of thing all here in zoom notes now, of course, there are other note-taking apps, especially for the um, iPad, that are really great, like NoteShelf. Um, I'm just not familiar with those. I don't use those. I wouldn't be able to give you any advice or technical assistance or tell you how well I think they work because I just don't use them. I use GoodNotes. I use Zoom Notes. I use OneNote. I use Metamoji Note. Those are the ones that I try to limit myself to because I want to at least have basic familiarity with those so that I can help when people have questions about using the app even though I'm not in any way in a position where I can give technical support for those apps because I don't work for those companies I don't write the code I don't know exactly everything that's going on I just know from a user standpoint what works for me and what doesn't and what they might be able to try to help them out so as far as the equipment is concerned for doing this I would not recommend running out and getting an iPad just so that you can have a bullet journal on an iPad because this thing is really expensive and in order for you to feel like you're really applying the method the way that it's meant to be done in the book you really need to have the Apple Pencil because this Apple Pencil right here makes all the difference in the world. I have a matte screen protector on here and my Apple Pencil and it's almost just like writing on paper. So that's part of the experience when it comes to doing the bullet journal method is to slow down, write things out, think about what you're doing, think about what you're writing, think about what's important. And that's easy to do on an iPad and a, with a pencil, but I wouldn't recommend just running out and buying one of these just for that purpose. Now, if you already have an iPad that's capable of using an Apple pencil, eh, maybe think about getting an Apple pencil if you don't have one already. Um, and I like to keep mine. You see, I have my case here. I just have it folded over and I have just this pin loop that I use right there and I stick it in there. That way my pencil is always with my iPad and I always know right where it is. It does not get lost that way. So this would be my number one recommendation is an iPad. Now, if you have a really nice stylus that you can use with a Samsung tablet, then that might be a great option also. I would also recommend getting the matte screen protector for anything that you use though, just to make it a smoother writing experience. Um, some of the Samsung tablets like have the S pens or the pens that come with them. And that would be my number one recommendation for the Samsung tablets, because anytime they come with the pens, like my older one had an S pen built into it, those write really nicely. They're not just like a, a weird uh, stylus that you have to try to sync up and whatever. These just out of the gate work nicely. Just like if you were using a note and using the S Pen that comes with the phone. This is fantastic. I use this with my phone. That's kind of the hardware side of this. So you see, you could even, if you have your iPad, you could listen to the book here and um, using Audible while you're doing your bullet journal. It's just so convenient. Right now, I'm not doing it digitally because I'm doing some other things that I'm tracking in my digital planner. And I, for the month of July, I have preferred to use paper to go through this book and kind of experience it back having it in a notebook so that is all you need to do to do this is have a notebook it could be a 25 cent spiral notebook from walmart and a pen or a pencil cheap big pen where you can get a pack of 12 for like a dollar that's all you really need to get started with this system you don't need anything else but if you already have this equipment and you want to do it and have the convenience of it all being in your ipad which you probably use for work anyway or you know you take with you everywhere then why not just give it a try so that's kind of my spiel on how you can apply the bullet journal method in your digital planner or a note-taking app that you have on your ipad on your phone or other tablet
you can even do that on the computer. It doesn't have to be something more portable like this. You can have it on your laptop. You can have it on your PC. So if you guys have any questions about any of the equipment or any of the apps that I mentioned, which are OneNote, Metamoji Note, Good Notes, and Zoom Notes, just let me know down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And remember that if you are making your own videos about One Book July 2019, then make sure that you use the hashtag One Book July 2019 so that your videos get put into the community playlist and everybody else can get the benefit of seeing what you're doing, what your perspective is on the book and how you're making that apply for you, what's working, what's not working. Just give an update video, let us know how things are going. There is also a Facebook group, which the link is down below in the description, that you can click on that and join the Facebook group and get updates over there. And don't forget to watch the other ladies' videos, which are Romani, Ms. Vicki B, and Carrie Harling, to see how they are getting things done with the bullet journal method. Romani is putting out some very good technical, how she's doing it, how she's applying it, how um, she's interpreting the book and using writer's perspective in her own notebook. And uh, Miss Vicky B is trying to apply it in her small little pocket notebook that's already kind of structured, kind of like the way these digital planners are structured, and seeing how that works for her. And Carrie is using another notebook method also that she has put everything into her notebook and she's applying the bullet journal method over there. So with some techniques that she's used always and some things that she's learning that are new for her. So just go check it out. And she's doing a read along of the book also. So check out all these ladies, see what they're doing, see what everybody's take is on the challenge and uh, let us know what you guys think and what you're doing. Y'all have a fantastic day and I will see you next time.